And thanks to everyone who's uh, attending today's news conference and, and uh, also uh, we'll uh, thank our speakers who I'll introduce in, in a moment. My name is Rocky Moretti. Uh, Moretti is M-O-R-E-T-T-I. And I'm the Director of Policy and Research with TRIP, a uh, transportation nonprofit organization based in Washington, D.C., supported by a coalition of transportation organizations in the manufacturing, insurance, construction, labor, and engineering fields. TRIP's report takes a look at the most critical information on New Mexico's transportation system, and then also combines that with, what, with, with data at the federal level, looking at the transportation system uh, across the country and also uh, critical issues like inflation. The format today is I'm going to quickly go through the TRIP report. And then at that point, we are going to, uh, and, and once we've heard from the speakers, uh, the me journalists will have an opportunity to ask questions. At that point, if you have a question, Carolyn Kelly on our staff will uh, put you onto the panel so that you can interact with us normally in terms of your questions or any follow-up questions. After I give my comments, we're going to hear from Senator uh, Michael Padilla. Um, uh, the Senator is uh, the majority of whip of the New Mexico State Senate. Uh, and then after that, we're going to hear from uh, Dan uh, hockman Uh She is the chair of the New Mexico House of Representatives and also a Public Works and Capital Improvements Committee. And then finally, we'll hear from Sean Hammer. Uh, Sean is the Quality Control Manager for Fisher Industries but also uh, the president of the Associated Contractors of New Mexico. Uh, and so we'll hear from those speakers uh, once I'm done uh, my comments. Our new report, New Mexico Transportation by the Numbers, is analysis of the latest data on the condition of New Mexico's transportation system and also its performance in terms of reliability, economic development, and safety. The report notes that in 2023, we've really seen a resurgence of travel in New Mexico post the, the COVID pandemic. Uh, we saw from 2019 to 2022 that transportation in New Mexico dropped dramatically during the initial parts of the pandemic, and even as late as 2022 had not returned fully to pre-pandemic levels. But this year in 2022, New Mexico is actually leading the country with a 4% increase in vehicle travel, which actually puts the state to a level of vehicle travel higher than pre-pandemic. So if, if, if people look around and they, they see uh, a lot of travel on, on the transportation system on the state's roads and highways, that's, that's a reflection of the reality that travel uh, ha has returned and, and, and really gone beyond pre-COVID. Um, we also uh, point out in the report that one of the, the significant uh, benefits in additional to, to additional funding by the legislature has been the passage in 2021 of the, of the Investment and in Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act at the federal level, which resulted in a 38% boost in federal funding into the state. Unfortunately, as we point out in the report, since the beginning of 2022 through the first three quarters of 2023, the level of highway construction cost index at the federal level, which is a measurement of, of labor costs and also materials, has increased by 36%. So unfortunately, that has really reduced the impact of the additional federal funding uh, but clearly has been, it continues to be critical, allowing the state to move forward um, but the, that inflation level, unfortunately, has been uh, has held things back to some extent in terms of the amount of work that, that New Mexico can proceed with with that funding. We asked the New Mexico Department of Transportation to give us a look at critical projects across the state where they've done some preliminary engineering and planning. They certainly identified these critical needs, but at this point, the construction funding is not in place, and the list is really quite an impressive list of critical projects across the state from, from rebuilding bridges and major highways to adding improvements that will improve safety and also projects that will add additional capacity on critical portions of the state's highway system to improve the reliability of the state's transportation system and also to support economic growth. 
The state has identified $6.6 billion of critically needed projects that currently don't have adequate funding to proceed. And these projects are, are desperately needed to improve the reliability, safety, and condition of the system. The report also point, look, takes a look at what's the impact of the public uh, when the transportation system is not in, you know, has pavements in poor condition, lacks some of desirable safety features, or has traffic congestion. The trip report finds that currently residents in New Mexico are paying an additional $3.3 billion annually in the cost of driving on rough roads, lost time due to traffic congestion, and additional serious traffic crashes where the lack of adequate safety features was a, likely a contributing factor. We broke that data down by individual areas. TRIP estimates that the average cost of motors in the Albuquerque area of roads that are deteriorated, congested, and may lack some desirable safety features is $2,980 annually. The TRIP report estimates that the average cost of motors in the Las Cruces area of roads that are deteriorated, congested, and lacking some desirable safety features is $1,987 per driver annually. The trip report estimates that the average cost of motors in the Santa Fe area of roads that are deteriorated, congested, and may lack some desirable safety features is $2,289 annually. The trip report took a look at the latest pavement conditions across the state and found that 32% of major locally and state maintained roadways have pavements in poor condition and 21% are rated in mediocre condition. Again, this also includes locally maintained roads and is a measurement of pavement smoothness, which obviously is, is, is correlated to the overall quality of those pavements and have an impact on motorists in terms of, of their cost and, and comfort in riding on those roadways also found that in the Albuquerque area that 40% of major locally and state maintained roads are in poor condition and another 22% condition. The trip report found that in the Las Cruces area that 38% of major locally and state maintained roads have pavements in poor condition and another 31% are rated in mediocre condition. In the Santa Fe area, found that 34% of major locally and state maintained roads have pavements in poor condition and another 24% are rated in mediocre condition. The trip report also found that 5% of New Mexico's bridges are currently rated in poor condition and these are bridges that while still safe to, to, for, to carry need a significant or immediate improvements to get them back into good condition. We also with vehicle travel and in, in significantly in 2023 took a look at the levels of traffic congestion in the state's largest urban areas. The trip report found that in the Albuquerque area that the average motors is spending an additional 48 hours annually stuck in traffic due to traffic congestion and wasting an additional 20 gallons of fuel. The trip report found that in the Las Cruces area that the average motorist is spending an additional 19 hours annually stuck in traffic due to traffic congestion and wasting an additional nine gallons of fuel. The trip report found that in the Santa Fe area that the average motorist due to traffic congestion is spending an additional 28 hours annually stuck in traffic and wasting an additional 14 gallons of fuel. The report also noted that over the last five years, 2021, there were 2,162 traffic fatalities on New Mexico roadways. Approximately 22% were actually of pedestrian and bicyclists. So traffic fatalities are impacting motorists and also pedestrian and bicyclists in the state. We also took a look at, at the impacts locally, and the report found that from 2017, 2021, there was an average of 179 traffic fatalities annually in the Albuquerque area. The report also found that from 2017 to 21, there were an average of 37 people killed in the Las Cruces area. The report 
found that from 2017 to 2021, there was an average of 35 people killed annually in traffic crashes in the Santa Fe area. 2022, the U.S. Department of Transportation put together a comprehensive approach to in, in keeping people safer and improving traffic safety and came out with a, a reproach that started with an emphasis on safe drivers traveling at safe speeds, improvement in, in post-care crash, further improvements in safer vehicles, but most critically improvement in roadway safety features. And clearly, if you look at the list of needed projects in the state, many of those have significant benefits in terms of improving traffic safety. As I, as I wrap up my comments, uh, as we pointed out in the report, every year $143 billion of goods are shipped in New Mexico, mostly by truck. And by 2050, the value of goods in terms of adjusted for inflation in New Mexico are going to increase 53%. Moving forward, as we point out, the state has a significant list of major projects moving forward. Addressing these needs will have a significant impact on the ability of the state to provide a transportation system that supports a high quality of life in New Mexico. With that, we're going to ask Senator Padilla to uh, go ahead and give us uh, some comments on, on the report. Senator? Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for inviting me to join you this morning. Uh, thank you for that very insightful information, Rocky. We're learning so much uh, from TRIP about New Mexico, and these are very helpful uh, uh, date, you know, dates, times, facts, figures, um, you know, all the way down to the mileage. It helps people like Representative Hockman Vigil and I uh, to help make decisions here in our state. So thank you so much for all the work that you do in that area. Uh, I want to thank uh, Mr. Hammer, Sean Hammer, for being here. Good to see you, sir. Uh, and thank you, Carolyn, as well. And, and you're going to get much more better information from Representative Hockman Hill than I, but I, I just want to start off by saying thanks for all of the wonderful information. Uh, I think this is the third or fourth year I've joined you for this particular exercise. Uh, we are, uh, you know, in a situation where we need substantial investments into our transportation needs here in New Mexico, from our major uh, byways all the way through to our local streets and connector streets and all of that. Um, I will tell you that um, in my district alone, which is the southwest quadrant of Bernalillo County, um, I can give you the most detailed information there, but we do travel all over New Mexico as a legislature. We, we bring government to the, to the people, and so we show up in, in, in the hamlets and the tiny communities in every county in New Mexico during what we call our interim period. Uh, so that we can hear from people. And we hear this over and over and over again. So I'm glad that we have some additional facts and you know figures and, and, and data here and, and very you know thoughtful research to help us make our decisions. You know, really, if you look at transportation, uh, you know, in New Mexico, we are the fifth largest landmass as a state. We are 46th in population. <laughs> so we've got some pretty long stretches of road, which makes the return on investment when we do upgrade or improve a road. Uh, you know, a pretty big deal for us. Uh, thankfully, we have people like Representative Hockman Vahim, who's a, the chairwoman of the, of the, or the chairperson, excuse me, of the committee in the House that oversees most of this and helps us put that budget together. But, we you know, it, it is, it, it's a really tough road for us, no pun intended, uh, because of how large the state is and, and how, you know, few taxpayers we have as a result. But, you know, when you think about it, it's what brings health care to our areas. Uh, educational, uh, you know, uh, value and things of that nature, and most importantly, economic development and job creation. So none of that's lost on someone like me. I take it very, very seriously. Um, I will tell you that um, I want to say that when I uh, was, I was for nine years a member of the transport, the um, I'm sorry, the Senate Business and Transportation Committee. We recently changed the name of that committee. But I think uh, when I joined the Senate 12 years ago, the figure I was given was something like 1.3 or 1.7 billion would get us to where we need to get. And that's great and wonderful and everything. However, uh, we wake up today in a very different scenario of something like, you know, four to 13 billion in terms of need. So again, the trip report is very helpful to us. We, we utilize it all the time. We crack that book open and look at that data because it's very helpful that way. Um, I, I'm going to continue to work, you know, in this area to help um, other members of uh, other of my colleagues to get this work done and to get these projects funded. New Mexico happens to be in a very good spot right now uh, from uh, a uh, surplus uh, in our budget of about $3.5 billion. Um, I am a, a co-signer 
and a, an enthusiastic co-signer of a piece of legislation sponsored by Representative Hockman V. Hill, who we will hear from momentarily, uh, to really begin to, to look to the future and how we're going to, you know, not have to have an emergency every every time something happens here, but instead create a funding mechanism that will last for the ages here in New Mexico. So thank you again for allowing me to join you. At the moment, I'm actually in Senate Finance right now, but I came out, I did not want to miss the opportunity to be a part of this. And then uh, I'm a member of leadership, as you mentioned, Rocky, in the Senate. So we have what's called Kit Committees Committee, where we will or will not deem all of Representative Hockman B. Hill's bills um, germane or not germane. But I, I want them all to be germane because she does such wonderful work. But I'm here. I'll hang out for a little bit more for some questions. But uh, back to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative? Thank you very much, Rocky. Thank you so much to all of you for having me here today. Um, I am a new chair uh, for transportation here in the House, and so I am still very much in the um, trial by fire and I'm learning all the information I can like through a fire hose as quickly as possible. And the trip report was actually one of the first things that I was exposed to as a new chair person last year. And it really helped open my eyes as to the work that we have to do in front of us. And so being able to um, have allies and legislators like Senator Pidia, who's been a champion for transportation and infrastructure for, I think as long as he's been up here, um, it, it's it's been very helpful because we also have wonderful uh, public servants and the New Mexico Department of Transportation who are completely dedicated to doing this job and making uh, New Mexico's transportation infrastructure better for everybody. However, that doesn't make some of these numbers any less shocking. Uh, New Mexico, we obviously have an issue with pedestrian deaths that we need to take a, a hard look at. Um, we're going to be bringing complete streets uh, legislation next year. M many of you probably don't know this, but New Mexico does uh, has a system where every even year we have a 30-day budgetary session where we're supposed to just formulate a budget for the state. Um, and then every odd year we do what we call a full 60-day policy session, which allows us to consider any and all other issues. And so during the next policy session, we will be bringing a safe, a, a safe and complete streets bill so that we can continue to make New Mexico a, a place or a safer place for um, you know both drivers and pedestrians alike on the road. Um, like Senator Padilla, Padilla already stated, New Mexico, we're in a very uh, interesting position in that um, people have this misconception that we're a resource poor state. And that's simply not true. Um, we actually have a ton of resources right now, more resources than some small countries, <laughs> other countries in the world. Um, but the problem we have actually is, is human capital and um, translating the ability to assign those resources in a way that's going to make a uh, proactive difference to solve some of these issues that we see in infrastructure and in transportation development. So. Um, New Mexico, it's we're very, very dependent on the extractive industries. It's a boom and bust budget for us almost every year, depending on how well oil and gas is doing, is um then is then demonstrates how well the state is going to be doing from a budgetary perspective. So I believe that one of my jobs here as, as uh, the new chairwoman is to design a revenue and funding system for the Department of Transportation that removes that removes them from that vulnerability. When we look at transportation, I don't know of any other agency that has longer plan out periods. Um, you know, some of our projects, a short project is going to be three to five years. Some of these projects, the Montgomery Interchange is taking 15 years. And so we have to be able to give the department the certainty it needs to know that it's going to have the funds avail available to complete all of the stages of these projects. So um, we're looking at creating um, stuff like a transportation trust fund. So we have a bunch of revenue now on one of the one of the more um, healthy years that we've seen in a while in New Mexico. And so the theme is taking today's money and putting it away for tomorrow. Um, that is a bill that Senator Padilla has graciously agreed to co-sign on. And uh, that is, again, creating and investing a trust fund so that we can create an interest bearing account for DOT that 
can dedicate it for specific areas. Right now, uh, DOT has the road fund, which is basically used for everything from filling potholes to, uh, you know, giving people salary raises. And that, that system is simply not working for us anymore. And one of the problems that we have, and I think is reflected in the, in the trip report, is maintenance almost always goes first. And we need to stop that practice. We need to actually have a dedicated fund so that New Mexico DOT knows that it can get all of its maintenance required in, for every state road every year so that we're not stuck in this position of actually spending more money later on because we're not spending the preventative money we need to spend now to take care of our streets. It's kind of like healthcare, right? You take care of yourself and your body now, you're probably going to be spending a lot less on healthcare later as you age. Same thing with roads. I'm working very hard with leadership to um, kind of help them to embrace this vision. For a long time, we have been just using one-time non-recurring general fund money for these large projects. Every year, it's a different project, and it really just depends on the whim of the legislators putting that budget together for that year. And I just, I don't think that's good public policy. I think that we need more certainty, and I think that we need a better prioritization system. And so um, things like the TRIP report are me to be able to go back to the powers that be and show them the data and the statistics to say, you know, look, these are where the, these are the problems that we have. This is what we need to figure out how to how to tackle first, second, third, fourth, and um, we can't just be doing transportation and infrastructure ad hoc, um, as Senator Pidia said before. You know, we, nobody's going to be able to go to school or go to their health care appointments or go to the grocery store if there are no roads for them to get there <laughs> on. And so, you know, transportation, I always I always tell everybody it may not be the most, you know, sexy or politically interesting subject, but it, I do believe it is the most important thing that we do on a state level. And um, I am very excited to continue to work with all of you at TRIP. And I can am very considered uh, excited to continue to use, utilize this information in a way that will help our state. So thank, thank you very much for inviting me to be here today. Good. Thank you, Representative. And, and, and Sean? Um... Yeah, um, I, I'm, I'm glad the representative hit on uh, comparing it to, to uh, health care uh, of taking care of yourself. Uh, a lot of the people see this uh, trip report as a as a report card of how an agency is performing, but that that's not true. It, it it's it's an annual doctor's examination of the infrastructure, one that needs to be concise and direct in order for the department and legislators to make informed decisions for determining uh, determining necessary funding levels and how to best address significant issues and plan for the future. So that was a perfect example that you that you provided for that. Um, it's 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 reassuring um, that we have allies such as Senator Padilla and, and, and Representative Hawkman Vigil, knowing that they see the importance of the infrastructure for New Mexico, not only in, in an economic standpoint, but um, it, it it there's it, it goes beyond just the the daily commuters and in the transportation of movement of goods and services throughout the state on well-maintained roads. There's thousands of families that re of hardworking New Mexicans that work in the maintenance and construction of New Mexico's roads, and that's how they depend on providing for their families. Um, so in order for them to have stability in their families to be able to provide for it, they also would be reassured knowing that there's a stable highway transportation budget out there for them. Well, well, thank you. I, I know the senator needs to, to get going shortly, so uh, I think as quickly as possible, if, if uh, people have questions, uh, if they can, they can indicate that. Um, Carolyn, do you see uh, any questions at this point? I do. I see a, a question from Marilyn Upchurch. Marilyn, I will um, promote you to a panelist and you'll be able to ask your question of, the, of our speakers live. All right, Marilyn, you'll just need to unmute your line and then you can go ahead with your question. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I am with uh, Channel 13. Just a question here. What are some of the uh, specific areas that do need help in our state? Some of the roads. Uh, if, if you look at the report, 
uh, and, and uh, I'm so, sort of calling that up at, at, as we speak on, onto my screen. Um, there's a, a listing of, and this, this list comes from the Me Mexico Department of Transportation broken into the six largest regions. So, you know, in the Albuquerque area, uh, there's a, a replacement bridge on New Mexico 500. Uh, there's some significant projects on, on Interstate 40 um, to reconstruct and add some lanes. Um, so if you take a look at, at the, the report, and maybe be in, in the news release, you'll see six or seven critical projects totaling $1.5 billion in the Albuquerque area that currently, uh, while they're being, you know, the engineering's occurring and the planning, uh, the reality is the construction money, which is the most critical component, is not yet available. So I can actually jump in on this one if it's all right, uh, Marilyn and, and Rocky. So the very first project that Rocky pointed out was the a bridge on 500. That's the Rio Bravo Bridge, Marilyn. I think you've probably uh, been there. Um, I know that you live and I think work in the area there. Um, this is a bridge that is actually two bridges and one of them is about to fall into the river. So uh, we, we are always repairing it. We're constantly putting money into it to to, to ensure its safety and this and that, we have to have to take that entire bridge out and and it's in my district and replace it. We've already raised about forty two million of the dollars to replace it. It is north of sixty eight million, however, to get the the thing done properly. Uh, we also want it to be pedestrian friendly. We also want it to be there's horses in the area. Uh, there's a number of, of ways this bridge needs to work for us. And so I just want to mention that that one is you know front and center on my radar. We have uh, most of the dollars to redo all of Isleta Boulevard, but uh, we're trying to get the money together to, to redo that bridge as well. And I apologize, everybody. I'm going to have to jump off now. I, I wish I could have stayed longer, but you are in the very capable hands of Representative Hockman Hill. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you so much. Uh, if it's okay, I'm going to ask one more question here. Um, we talked a little bit about that federal infrastructure funding um, how do you hope that will really help with progress over the next few years? Well, that, thank you for the question, Marilyn. And so um, essentially what is really cool about the federal infrastructure is it's giving us an opportunity to take on uh, projects that we may not have had the opportunity to take on before. The key for that, however, is a lot of these federal, a lot of the, these federal funds have a match state fund match requirement, many of them up to 20%. And so what we're doing right now uh, as part of this 30 day session is we are floating a bill that would actually create an office uh, for state, federal state match funding. Uh, which would also create the opportunity for uh, municipalities that are looking to apply for such federal funds to get assistance with grant identify identification of grants that they would be eligible for writing for those grants. And if they were to be lucky enough to be selected for those grants, um, coming up with the reporting requirements that are required as 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 part of the, the federal uh, money is released. So being able to have an infrastructure in place from a state perspective that would allow us to take full advantage of the federal dollars um, would really put New Mexico um, uh, above above many uh, other states and would really, I think, um, make a huge difference in where we are just currently. I think if we were able to get this bill through and the, and the money appropriated for it, we would see um, differences, especially from the transportation infrastructure perspective right away. Thank you, Representative. Um, and I know we've got one another question from um, Samuel. If you want to unmute your line, Samuel, you can go ahead and ask your question. Hi, good morning. My name is Sam Harris. I'm a reporter with KVIA in El Paso and Las Cruces. I had a question specifically to my region in southern New Mexico and the cost that the report had that issues with traffic and driving can cost Las Cruces drivers around $1,900 to $2,000. What is the specific issues that could cost drivers annually the most money? Sure. If, if you look at the, those numbers uh, for the for the Las Cruces area, you know the largest one is, is the vehicle operating cost portion, and 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 so that that is driving that's driving on rough roads, and, and unfortunately, what happens uh, with more than a third of the roads in poor condition, another third in mediocre condition. 
is it's putting it, it, more stress on a vehicle and you feel it when you're when you're driving in that vehicle and the most critical part of that is accelerated depreciation es essentially a vehicle doesn't last as long as it should but then you're also looking at additional maintenance and you're, you're looking at uh additional uh fuel use and 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 uh uh tire wear for that matter um in terms of the other cost if you look at the safety cost uh we take a look at uh, the, the number of, of, of fatalities in a region. And then the National Highway Tra Traffic Safety Administration, also state by state, estimates the economic costs of those serious and fatal traffic crashes and, and, and you know, lost productivity, uh, health care costs. And, and it, realistically, those are not the most critical. The, the emotional costs are, are, are far in excess and, and, and really hard to measure. But Again, just looking at the economic consequences in a region. And then the final part is, is traffic congestion, uh, taking a look at when you lose reliability and people are spending more time driving because of, of bottlenecks and congestion in the region, uh, then that's the additional estimate based on how much time are they, are they losing? Uh, and also you're burning more fuel uh, when you're stuck in traffic. So those three components, the condition of the roads, traffic congestion and safety total up to our estimate in the Las Cruces area of $1,987 in additional cost annually per motorist. Thank you. And my follow question to that is, do you guys send your data and your research to the New Mexico Department of Transportation? And how does that work to try to improve some of those conditions? Well, well certainly we, we go ahead and share the report um, with, with uh, transportation agencies, you know, particularly because they're providing a lot of that information. And, and so it's, it's certainly a courtesy. And we also want to make sure that, that we have taken their information and presented it accurately. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sam. I don't see any further questions at the moment. Um, I'll note while we wait just another minute to see if any other questions come in. The full report is available on TRIP's website right now. You can find that at tripnet, T-R-I-P-N-E-T dot O-R-G. And in the next 30 minutes or so, we'll also have a recording of this news conference that'll be available there as well. Okay, well, I'm going to, again, thank our speakers for taking the time. Uh, I know the center had to leave us earlier, but uh, Representative uh, and also uh, uh, Sean, thank you for joining us. And again, TRIP is available throughout the day so that for, for any media that have any follow-up questions, uh, by all means, reach out to us and, and uh, we'll be happy to talk to you. Again, and thanks everyone for, for taking time this morning for attending our news conference. Thank you for having us. Thank you.